are back. We had a special last night looking back over the last 30 years at Ron Paul fighting tyranny. Great job for the crew putting that together, but we are back. It is Tuesday, the 27th day of December 2011. Coming up later in the week, we'll uh, look at the top 10 stories from our perspective of 2011 and our predictions and trends that we see unfolding in 2012. Coming up later in the evening, we're going to have Patrick Henningsen, InfoWars reporter, joining us from London. Another InfoWars reporter, Jason Barmas, joining us <clears throat> from New York as we look at Iran, the unfolding police state, the latest on MF Global, and a lot more. That is all coming up. And uh, I want to give you a bit of a uh, prelude to a special report we're going to put out probably Thursday on the syndicated radio show and then post it as a video report to InfoWars.com, dealing with more population reduction documents. And uh, that's this stack right here. Uh, today, I shot about 30 minutes for the report that I want to cut down to about 10. That's the problem, is showing you all the proof. There, there's so much of it, it's ridiculous. And the reason I'm going to cover this is there's an article in CBS News titled, Ron Paul Disavows Racist Newsletters Under His Name. And literally more than 200 of these last week that, that I was in the middle of. And they used this talking point uh, in the uh, article saying that Ron Paul goes on Alex Jones's show where they believe the military is going to take over America, which is openly being announced, and that the government is adding chemicals to the water to, to encourage homosexuality. Listen, I've got the UN Planned Parenthood document right here sourced. Okay, this, this is on record, Library of Congress. So I'm going to read this to you, CBS News. I don't care whether you like it or not. People have a right to choose their gender. This is an attack on the species itself. And look at how it's always these Nazis running political correctness. Because they say, oh my God, all over the news, Alex Jones says they're adding chemicals to the water and to the printer ink and everything else to, to reduce fertility and do this to people. And then they spin it and say it has something to do with gay or straight. This has to deal with infertility. And the byproduct is the men are so confused hormonally that they're not even attracted to women. And this is epidemic. And then they turn an assault like this into, oh, don't be homophobic. Just, just take the chemicals and join us. Okay, so, so it's amazing information, and I'm going to be breaking that down coming up. And if you guys are looking for uh, the article, it's Ron Paul disavows racist newsletters under his name. That is the name of the article that we're going to be going over uh, on that front. This is the mind control we face. The government, in concert with major corporations, is adding chemicals to the water, to the food and to the containers that food is in, that in hundreds of studies, including government studies, is massively increasing cancer. My footnote is, is that it confuses sexuality in men, hyperfeminizes women. And then the media spins it like it's an attack. Uh, I know there are some people who are naturally attracted to the same sex. That isn't my issue here on this broadcast. The point is, this is a sterilization process. And it's wrong. People should decide if they're going to have children. People should be naturally what they are. And this is an attempt to make people something they aren't for population reduction. I'm going to go over the proof coming up. Now, let's get into the main body of the news before I get back into that in detail here. Obama to ask for debt limit hike, Treasury official. Remember, the last debt increase is going to be the last. And we're going into the debt to the mega banks that own the private Federal Reserve that we bailed out to the tune in one year of 16 plus trillion, a total in the last four years, 27 trillion, and we haven't gotten new numbers in a while. So we give them trillions, and then they come in and loan it back to the American people, and we go into debt to them. The government, of course, loans them the money at zero or lower than zero. They loan it back to us at massive interest. And so now the debt ceiling that was 14 trillion went to 15.194 trillion. Now it's going to 16 trillion 394 billion. So now it is jumping back up yet again in everybody's face. 
And this is all part of these money changers, these, these Ponzi scheme operators that, that literally create all this out of nothing, but then we've got to pay taxes on our real labor to them, giving their Ponzi fraud value. You get how that little magician trick uh, works. So there is uh, that report on that front. Now, here's another big fat C, I told you so. And it doesn't matter whether it's Obama in office, it doesn't matter whether it's George Bush in office, Mitt Romney, anybody but Ron Paul, it's the same deal because they're all bought and paid for by the same interest. Here's another big fat, I told you so. Because almost 10 years ago, I watched C-SPAN and I saw Homeland Security say, you're going to have to have government approval to have a job, to live, to drive, to walk down the street. If you haven't paid all the taxes, we say, you're, we're going to order your employers to fire you. I mean, this is like in the ghettos in Germany where they said you can't operate a business now, you got to wear a yellow star. This is exactly what tyrannies engage in. Here's the LA Times. TSA screenings aren't just for airports anymore. And it says bus stations, malls. Well, they're already running t ads where they show the TSA at malls and at football games. We're coming to grab your daughter's genitals, to look in your baby's diaper, to confiscate your cupcakes. That's now happening. To train you that you're a prisoner and you're bad. And notice they say, critics say it's largely political theater. No, critics say it's conditioning to train us to be prisoners, dog training. And it's, it's training us we're guilty until proven slaves, not guilty until proven innocent. Of course, it should be innocent until proven guilty. But now it's just you're guilty. Only Homeland Security can be trusted. The same folks caught shipping drugs into the U.S., guns out of the U.S. on record. The same crooks with big mega banks laundering hundreds of billions of drug money every year, getting caught, nobody gets in trouble, like Corzine taking all that money and not getting in trouble. I mean, it's just open a bunch of thugs out of control. And they don't care that we know. I guess they do kind of care. They're moving to start shutting down the free Internet as we know it and admitting it. <laughs> so uh, there's that here. No, people are mad because it's groping. That's why they, uh, I saw numbers of 40 billion a year now lost in tourism of the U.S. alone. People won't come here. Communist China, which is, which is a police state, doesn't do this to go down the road or to go to a shopping mall or to go to an airplane. Okay? So it's amazing. And so they're going to be everywhere. And they just got their, funded, their, their funding tripled to do this, so look out. There's that article. And look, I could show you us nine and a half years ago in films I made and articles warning you about this, but here we are from December 7th of last year, more than a year ago, Americans outraged as Big Sis launches DHS invasion of society. And in the article, we talk about highway checkpoints, telescreens in Walmarts and other locations saying only trust government, government PSAs. Uh, and uh, how they're going to be involved in every aspect of your life doing this. They were already doing test cases of this, where you pull up and the feds are running local police, and they go, we're going to grow up your family, just, just randomly. Again, you're all guilty. How about, how about the government gets groped? I, mean, I bet if you actually went and checked what they're doing, you'd find all sorts of horrible stuff, because this, these are a pack of criminals with a bunch of uh, v you know, veterans who've been overseas setting up police state systems in other countries, now coming back and filling the ranks and again, most veterans come back awake. They do psychological testing and find the ones that like checkpoints and, you know, d groping people and doing all this, and they set them up to wage war against the American people. Speaking of China and speaking of police states, uh, China has uh, jailed another dissident, Chin uh, Zi, for 10 years, if I'm pronouncing that right. And they said because he wrote some blogs criticizing the government, uh, they said that... Uh, uh, he had uh, criticized the government, and that undermines them, and so he can be arrested and basically disappear into a black hole. And now our criminal government has put this on paper and says it's the law with the NDAA. So all over the world, uh, governments are saying, hey, you're inciting subversion through online essays. You're saying the government's illegitimate. You disappear into a black hole. But at least here he had a judge and a trial. Under the NDAA, you don't even get that. So continuing here, um, here's AP. The so-called U.S. military is pulled out of Iraq. They've kept over 100,000 contractors there, got giant embassy bases. They run the military. They already want to break the country in three parts, as they always plan to do. And Al-Qaeda, the same real Al-Qaeda groups they're using to attack Iran, their neighbor, who's Shiite, our, our media then, so-called media, says Iran is Al-Qaeda when the Shiites are the opposite of the Wahhabists. Okay, I mean, I mean, the rest of the world laughs at us, but they think our public is so dumb. Hey, one brown guy is different, you know, 
from another brown guy, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's basically how the world sees this, uh, is, that, is that we're just totally mindless and absolutely dumbed down. But here, the average American just says, hey, you know what? That must be a SWAT team officer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I thought terrorists wore masks. There's an evil Al-Qaeda terrorist. He's going to try to get us. We've got to give all our rights up. And meanwhile, it's admitted that Al-Qaeda works for the criminal banks, and they've given them control of Libya. Now they're invading Syria with them. They've given them control of so many other countries like Egypt. Al-Qaeda is a tool of the New World Order period. And here's the Associated Press. An Al-Qaeda front group in Iraq has claimed responsibility for a wave of attacks that ripped through markets, cafes, and government buildings in Baghdad on a single day last week, killing 69 people and raising new worries about the country's path since the U.S. left. So that sells the idea that, oh, without the West, what are you going to do? You need to keep the contractors in the U.S. there because Al-Qaeda struck. The very same Al-Qaeda group on record being funded by the West to attack Iran. That's how dumb the system thinks we are. Continuing here, and this will segue us into uh, the big report that uh, we're about to get to dealing with chemicals being added to the water, the food, and into the containers that our food and water uh, is uh, held in. Here's an article of the Huffington Post, but that isn't the issue. You go to the first link, and it's the International Journal of Bioethical Sciences, analyzing the effects of genetically modified foods on mammalian health. That's all mammals. We're mammals. Researchers found that the agricultural giant Monsanto GM corn is linked to organ damage in rats. Now, these studies don't just show that. They've had these for decades. It also shows massive infertility. Within three generations, with the average GMO crop, in rats, guinea pigs, you name it, they cannot have offspring, and they have all sorts of weird deformities. Uh, according to the study, which summarized uh, by Randy uh, Ananda at Food Freedom, three varieties of Monsanto GM cord, Mon863, insecticide producing Mon810, and Roundup herbicide absorbing NK603, were approved for consumption by U.S., European, and several other nations' food safety authorities. But it goes on to break down kidney and liver function, other organs, uh, spleen, blood cells were also uh, found to be damaged and uh, that it, it uh, caused all sorts of other problems uh, in the sexual organs, you name it. So, so and, and by the way, it's not just Monsanto. It's every company as you go down the line because they're not, they don't just have the traits that you're told about to last longer, taste better, or take less water. They Trojan horse the traits in there for fertility destruction and cancer. And that's in all the studies. So here's just another one. Uh, right there, we're going to get more into this, why this is happening in a moment, but I thought I'd show you this. Now remember, all of these different industries, fertilizer production, aluminum smelting, uh, uranium uh, purification, they've got all of this massive byproduct in the 40s and 50s. What do they do? Well, fluoride reduces fertility, increases cancer, lowers IQ, cognitive development. Uh, it, it was a well-known poison 200 years ago. Uh, it was used as bug poison as far back as 200 years ago. They just said, hey, we'll just go ahead and add it to the water and make cities pay millions of dollars a year like Austin, Texas does. We've covered this ad infinitum. But now that the American Medical Association has been forced to admit that it's actually hurting kids and people under five shouldn't have it and that it should be lowered, the amount that's in drinking water, and people are taking their cities back and ordering it removed, states like Arkansas are passing laws saying it's the law at being in the water. The feds, it's always just a recommendation, and they lobby and will pay to have it done because they care so much about your teeth. And they want you to have your teeth fracturing and dental fluorosis. Now, well, which it actually causes. But now they're coming out with mobile fluoride trucks with all sorts of little candies and things with the fluoride in it. And I remember, I, I didn't know anything about this when I was in kindergarten in Dallas. But I remember, and my dad had, had just graduated and, and was a dentist, so I thought, well, this must be nice. They'd bring us red little pills. And I remember throwing up and getting sick and laying in the back of the car vomiting when my mother would pick me up uh, in kindergarten and first grade when they came in. And I was too dumb. I didn't know it was in a little candy package. I'd, I'd eat it like I was supposed to and just get deathly ill. And I remember being like five, six, seven years old. Every time I'd brush my teeth, I'd get really have a headache and I'd lay down on the couch. And, and, of course, now I understand if you swallow anywhere near a pea size, you're supposed to call poison control. Of course, kids always swallow that. Uh, see, I, I didn't need to have the science. I mean, this, this was happening. 
when I was a child, and I never heard this, and my dad didn't know, because the American Dental Association were telling him it was so great. And, and they weren't telling him, of course, that it, under the name fluoride, they had hundreds of chemicals to the toothpaste uh, and to uh, the water supply. But here it is, mobile fluoride vans to target communities that voted to remove chemical from the public water supply. They look like basically an ice cream truck and they drive around. Health officials, not servants, are suggesting the county purchase a mobile fluoride van as an alternative which would drive around town and administer fluoride and other controversial dental services directly to children, like an ice cream truck. Now, a notice, this already happened in California. They signed the law three months ago, Mr. Brown did, saying that parents won't even be told. They're just going to give your kid the vaccines right there. They're going to ask your child, do you want it, and show them a film scaring them. Now, now, now there's a reason that if you have a 16-year-old girlfriend when you're 20, you can go to jail, statutory rape, because they're not of age yet to make the decision and determination they want to get back in the back of your Chevy. Now, we're talking about 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13-year-olds. The government coming and saying, we don't need your mommy and daddy's parental consent anymore. We're going to give you this. So that's forced. That's forced. And that's the state getting in front of what you say and what you do. And selling this bull line of, well, if you're not vaccinated, you'll get others sick. Wait, if you've had the nauseous poison the fertility reducer, the cancer causer, chemical bioweapon mix, then you should be safe, right? Of course, the studies are out in every case. The vaccines actually cause the illnesses, lower your immunity. Look it up for yourself. They only get away with this crap because you're unconscious. I'm going to hit the uh, people rioting for the stupid Air Jordans as we go to break and go to the next two interviews. I want to hit right now, though, because it dovetails with the fluoride bans and the organ failure uh, and the GMO and, uh, and the fertility attacks with this. Here is CBS News on screen right there. R Ron Paul disavows racist newsletters under his name. And the reason I know that this is a talking point <clears throat> is because it, in the last three years, has conservatively been in probably a thousand blogs <clears throat> and a couple hundred newspapers and nightly news pieces on national TV. I mean, it's been everywhere. Uh, just last week, there were hundreds of articles. I couldn't even count them all. If you type Ron Paul, Alex Jones into Google and click it, with ABC, CBS, uh, I mean, you name it, attacking Ron Paul for coming on my radio show and saying he's crazy, he thinks there's a threat to use troops on the streets as Congress votes to get rid of Posse Comitatus and do that. And Alex Jones, they have the quote right here. Alex Jones... Um, it says, uh, who has reportedly accused the government of encouraging homosexuality with chemicals so that people don't have children. And they went on to say that Ron Paul comes on my show and is worried about military NORTHCOM uh, combatant command. They couldn't even get that right. Taking over the nation. Now, I'm going to explain this again to everybody. This, this is good that they're attacking me on this because they haven't figured out they're totally discredited yet. I'll give you a document cam shot of this right here. I want to talk directly to the scum out there, okay? I have done report after report after report on what I'm about to cover right here, okay? And I have gone over this information ad infinitum to warn people. If you type in bisphenol A cancer, Bisphenol A or BPA breast cancer. You will find everything I'm talking about. And they're really mad that I'm covering this. They are very, very angry that we figure this out, hiding in plain view, and we're not as dumb as, as these control freaks thought we were. Let me get to that document in just a moment. The system knows that we are onto them, and they're worried. And so that's why out of an hour-long report I did a couple years ago, they take that one line that was a quote, by the way. That's not Alex Jones claiming. That's UN. That's Rockefeller Foundation. That's Planned Parenthood. That's the Population Global Council. The Global Population on the Global Council on Population. We're going to go to that in a moment. 
They are attacking what it is to be human itself. They are attacking the human species. This is the end of mommy, the end of daddy, the end of little Johnny, the end of little Jenny. This is the end of everything we've ever been. This is scientific total domination. This is humans in a Petri dish being manipulated by a bunch of control freaks. And we've got Bertrand Russell quotes. We've got UN quotes. We've got Ted Turner quotes. We've got Club of Rome quotes. We've got biological diversity assessment quotes. I've made films like Endgame. I've made all these films showing you their own manuals, showing you their own documents, buying their own textbooks, showing you the quotes. And you'll notice when I read these new documents today to you here in just a moment, check out how much time we've got, you'll notice that when I go over these, that you've heard all this before, but from other sources, this is what they're into. And as long as you're obsessed with Monday Night Football, and as long as the most important thing in your life is acting tough over at your neighbor's house when you play basketball, as long as garbage like that is what's most important to you, they do win. While we sleep, they live. Okay? Now, I want to go over this. You just saw CBS News with this talking point that I say the government wants to put chemicals in your food to make you homosexual. Now, before I get to this document cam shot right here, I want to explain something to people. I want you to put on your thinking caps. I don't want you to be under emotional knee-jerk reaction mind control. The reason they've had hundreds of outfits come after us for this is because they're scared to death that you're going to actually hear the full context of what I'm saying. This is not a moral discussion about same-sex relationships. It happens in the animal kingdom. It's gone on in every culture. It, it happens. I'm not making a moral distinction on it. Quite frankly, uh, I know it makes people have more fun doing this kind of stuff if they think people don't like it. I don't give a you-know-what, okay? I'm into the universe. I'm into the secrets of the world. I'm into science and ideas and, and creativity. I'm not obsessed with what people do with their tallywhackers, okay? Let's get that straight. So... I'm going to tell you why your wife's dying of breast cancer. I'm going to tell you why you got prostate cancer at 50. I'm going to tell you about a program to kill you, to hurt you, to dumb you down, to steal your fertility. Even if you don't want to have children, you weren't asked. And then they give you a culture of loving it and getting into it because it's going to become so prolific. And they're going to sell you on metrosexual. And they're going to sell you on all this because they want to get rid of the family. And to do that, you got to get rid of men. And you've got to get rid of women as loving providers of children. And it's all in their own sickening documents. Gloria Steinem, CIA, on record. These people are sick. They want to destroy the wonderful relationships men and women have had. They don't really, the leadership of this, care about gay and lesbian rights. It's not about that. It's about creating political groups that they've actually artificially increased with chemical warfare to then politically play society off against each other and divert everyone from the chemical warfare that we're under. Now, CBS News is attacking Alex Jones. CBS News and others are saying Alex Jones says that the government is adding chemicals to make you gay. No. I was reading UN documents and others on that show, and they all know fully which show it was that's gotten so much attention. But let's just go... And we got a full report coming out later in the week with it bibliographed where it was said officially in the record. This is their official policy. <clears throat> Memorandum to the president of the Population Council from the head of Planned Parenthood on world population. And if you look at the two men here in this correspondence and this official plan, you'll notice John P. Holden repeats this in Ecoscience decades later. You'll see this over and over again. This is the plan. 1969, we got stuff from 65 about sterilants and vaccines. We've got stuff from the 30s on this. The, the Rockefellers funded the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute that created Nazism. The, you want to know where the Nazis came from? You want to know why they did what they did with the infirm and all the homosexuals and all that? It started here. <clears throat> now look. Restructure family, postpone or avoid marriage, alter image of ideal family size, compulsory education of children, means by the state for brainwashing, 
encourage increased homosexuality. You see that? Why? Not because they think it's really cool, but because they don't want you having children. And again, I'm sick of seeing all these homosexual groups out there who say don't even use the word homosexual, heterosexual, homosexual. It's a scientific term. And then I always hear this anti-family garbage being spewed out of these groups. I'm sick of it. And I'm not saying that's just one group, but the groups that work for this whole system. Educate for family limitation. I've had women walk up to my wife, even when she, we had two kids in, in Whole Foods, and say, how dare you? When we've got three, they act like we're demons. Fertility control agents and water supply. John P. Holdren, anybody? Encourage women to work because they want double taxes and the state to raise the children. That gets into the CIA, Miss Magazine, Gloria Steinem on record, funded by it. And I have all that right here in these documents. That's what's frustrating about all this. Continuing. Source, a family planning perspective special supplement published by Planned Parenthood, World Population, New York City, 1970. But again, the original report went out in 69. Let's continue. Tax with more than a single child. That's being called for for carbon taxes now. Reduce, eliminate paid maternity leave. And it just goes through. Bonuses for delayed marriage and greater child spacing. Eliminate welfare payments after first two children. Again, some of this sounds reasonable. Because there's the other end of this, and that really gets sophisticated, where the World Population uh, Council and the Commission on Population in 49, the British government, actually said, no, we'll just let everybody explode, and then we'll soft kill them later, but we really want to focus on the smart people. The big trick, see, they get, quote, smart people to go, you're part of the elite, you're going to be a PhD, we've got to get rid of the population. That happened to my dad, but he said no to it at University of Texas. Professor Spear told him that, the head of the botany department, because my dad was, you know, top of his class, or actually came in with top scores. And then they sell them on, we're going to, you know, basically dumb down and get rid of the dumb people. But that's not what's really going on here. That's bad enough. They're actually targeting smart people. They're, they're attacking the general public with chemicals and biologicals because they're threatened by intelligence. See, it's even more sophisticated and dastardly. Now, continuing here, this is the Chinese model, communist China. Compulsory abortion of out-of-wedlock pregnancies. Same thing that was done in the U.S. and Nazi Germany. That's the Chinese model. Compulsory sterilization of all who have had two children except for a few who will be allowed three. Payments to encourage abortion. That's what Planned Parenthood does. And here in Travis County, they have taxpayers paying for other people's abortions. That's the problem with socialized medicine. Then you've got to, the government can then social engineer through it. Discouragement of private home ownership. Again, all of this, they want everybody totally domesticated. Now, this is official. We have all this bibliograph. We have a big report coming out on Thursday that goes through all of this with all the documents. Let, let's go through some more of this. The Margaret Sanger Awards, you know, she got awards from Hitler, gave him awards before he wasn't fashionable. But who are some of the folks here? Martin Luther King Jr. Now, he probably didn't know fully what was happening, but Margaret Sanger in letters that we actually sent off to university for Endgame and got to make sure they were real, said, we got to hire blacks as our fronts. We'll pose as liberals to kill these people. And see, Ron Paul has helped expose all this. That's why they hate him and call him racist. They're like, oh, we're liberal. We love you. Here's somebody to kill your kids. We love black people. Do we say how much we love African Americans? Now, just take, just, just give us, let us kill the baby. Ron Paul, you know, had tens of thousands of newsletters published and a few things in there. Talked about welfare, people rioting. He's, he, 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 he doesn't like you. Uh, continuing here uh, with all of this, uh, here's another UNESCO, UN training manual for in-teacher service in the United States, where the UN sets all that. And in this document, it talks about uh, the, the family is poisonous towards a world understanding for world socialism, 10 part for teachers, and it says uh, that the child breathes the poison air of nationalism, and you got to get rid of the family that infects the child with extremism, you know, to have the global super state, and it just goes through it all. It's unbelievably nightmarish. I have that report for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the BPA document section. Um, here's government reports right here. Transfer of bisphenol A from thermal printer paper to the skin. And, and we checked the company we use. We're so weak-minded. This is actually bisphenol A because you can't really find printer ink that doesn't have it. 
Uh, and that's why people that are around Printer Inc. have much higher rates of this. I mean, as much as I work out and everything, it's hard to have a higher estrogen level. I've actually gone ahead and had my blood tested. It's going on. It, they're hitting me hard right now, and we're having to search for printer paper just so I can have a hard copy of this and not be poisoned. I mean, it's just, it's just everywhere. Their chemical warfare is everywhere. Here's another one. Uh, Centers for Disease Control, admitting bisphenol A, totally deadly. Now they grind it into recycled everything. Toilet paper has it in it. It gets on the mucous membrane of your you-know-what. Uh, on women and men, and it's going right into the body. Estrogen, 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 estrogen. You want to know why you have breasts as a man? This is it. Okay? And, and, and by the way, for women, it's a death sentence because it hyperfeminizes. You know about even three year olds going to puberty? Five year olds? Six, seven, eight year olds? Because it's all in the food, the water, the plastics, that TV dinner for your kids. Bisphenol A, look on the bottom. And what do they say in all these documents? We'll put it in the food, the water, the containers. We'll put it in things that everybody universally is involved in. Printer, ink. Printer, the money is printed in bisphenol A. They have thousands of plastic calculations. I've had chemists on in plastics. I had a former Dow guy on years ago. They could have all these other varieties that are even cheaper, but they got the major corporations together to standardize and get tax breaks for bisphenol A. And they've been doing it for 50 years. Where's the American mail? Where is he? He's been gelded. He's been chemically. You can actually pull up statistics, and I'm, I meant to do this in the report we shot today. I forgot there's so many facets. Did you know that the genitals, both scrotum and penis, are getting smaller? Did you know men now, many men after the age of 40, just to have an erection? When studies showed just 30 years ago, men had erections into their 80s. Men are having to go on hormone supplement just to have the normal levels. Not just the fertility, but our normal testosterone has gone down. Oh, but it's trendy. I'm being anti-gay right now. No, I have a right to not have you sons of bitches put this crap all over the place and jack the food and water with it. Okay? If some of you want to run around and, 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 and prance around and dress like women, knock yourselves out. I don't care. But I like women. I want my son to be able to get married. I want grandchildren. Okay? I'm not bad. But we're the hunted ones. We're the evil people. Just because we want to be humans. Why are whales allowed to have male and female? Why are deer? Are they homophobic? Are wolves evil? No, I'm a creature. I live here. I'm designed to breed. I'm designed to live. And these little jackasses are manipulating our genetics and then going politically correct. He doesn't like gay people. Uh, 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 more bisphenol A. Uh. I mean, it just shows the mind control of it. And then the breast cancer. The, the, uh, what it does to the breast, it hyperages. And what it does to the ovaries, the testicles, the prostate. I mean, it's a death sentence. I mean, now I'm anti-women because I don't think three-year-olds should be going into puberty. By the way, you think I'm joking? Three-year-olds are now menstruating. In fact, Google it. Uh, as children as young as five, three to five now going into, I mean, it's happening. The boys are going into puberty later because they're on female hormones. And the girls, but I know, I know you won't stop because it's not trendy. Just breast cancer, trendy, cool. You know, you notice they never talk about ways to find out why the U.S. has the highest rate and then Europe next uh, for breast cancer. They know full damn well. It's all about treating it. How to burn your breast off, how to cut them off, how great it is, instead of telling you why these bastards are doing it to you. And then I'm not supposed to even get angry here. <laughs> I haven't even gotten into the documents. I mean, here's CDC, but hey, CBS can just make fun of me. Growing up soon. Puberty strikes seven-year-old girls. Study in three major cities finds that puberty is rising among second graders. Uh, yeah, no, there's actually now people uh, age three, if you actually look at the medical literature. And by the way, it's large numbers. The average age is now 10 now. In the 1950s, it was 14. So your boys are supposed to go into puberty at 11 to 13. Girls are supposed to go in 13 to 14 in all studies the medical reports going back for hundreds of years. Now, your boys are little girls, so their testicles don't even drop a lot of times until they're 15. Okay? And your women are running around dressed like whores when they're nine. And you know why they're acting like that? Because they're on female hormones. And you may like your daughter dying. You may think it's fun mama's getting her breast burned off right now and going to be in a box soon. But I'm pissed off about this. Excuse me. I mean, is there no end to what these murdering scum do to us? And of course, 
Oh, the doctor assured them there was nothing wrong with the girl, and then they give them hormone treatments. Oh, here, we'll give you hormones to block you going into this instead of saying, why are you on all these hormones? Why are you, why is this happening? Why? Why is cancer exploding? Breast cancer, several thousand percent. Why? 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 Instead, oh, don't worry, we got a treatment for that. And notice, typically, U.S. girls hit puberty around 10 or 11. It used to be 13 or 14. Now, oh, the old low age is now the new old age. And soon it'll be, well, typically girls go into puberty at 7 or 8, but now they go into it at 2 or 3. By the way, you read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, whose brother was Julian Huxley and ran the UN UNESCO program. Before the UN even existed, in 1932, he wrote Brave New World, where the elite have different cast of humans, and they have humans that go into puberty by seven to have more basic little drones, and, and they're all grown in these frickin' tanks. Go read it. And Huxley, before he died, spilt the beans in 62 at Berkeley and said, this is all planned, we're going to do it to you. I mean, it's, it's a total, and it's all chicken neck scum playing God, saying we deserve it, writing memos about it. And, and still, most people will say, hey, Alex says you're getting breast cancer from that. He's the one that says it's me. he's a homophobe. And I'm like, uh, no, uh, the frogs are actually uh, now uh, bisexual. Well, shut up. They deserve it, too. What are, you, what are you against that? And it's like, I mean, it's like a religion. It's like running off cliffs. Oh my God, the level of idiocy is just unbelievable. Here's another one. London Telegraph, bisphenol, a now link to male infertility. Sperm counts plunging, 87%. Toxic chemicals and branded clothing. It's in the clothing. It's in the food. It's in the water. They know. They're adding it. They're not stopping. It's a war. De Canada declares BPA toxic. Set stage for more. Some countries are trying to restrict it, but here in the U.S., uh-uh. They're just saying, you, you don't think you're going to stop us by choosing stuff that's bisphenol A? You're going to learn to read the number on the bottom? Because the elite like having that number. They're like, oh, I'm not getting that. That's not for me. They're it's all their little sick joke. They're just going, we're hitting everything. You think you're going to, just like when we exposed aspartame in the food and water, killing people and causing problems? Now they've added it to tens of thousands of products. All the sugar gums, everything, they're like, you're not going to stop us for a minute. You know what aspartame is? Go look it up. I always tell people this, and they laugh at me until they look it up, and they go, oh, my God, you're right. The Pentagon is trying to create bacteria that produce chemical weapons. And it's one of the first genetically engineered bacteria in the 60s, 1967, E. coli, that eats toxic waste and craps out aspartame. It is bacteria crap. It's a highly toxic neurotoxin. And of course you want more of it. It gets you higher in the kite. You think Coca-Cola got angry when they couldn't put cocaine in it anymore? They just came out with this little goodie. It took them three tries to get it approved at the FDA until the former head of Searle, the subdivision of Monsanto, got in there in the Reagan administration and got it legalized. Have you read the monkey studies of what aspartame added to monkey milk did to the babies? Okay, uh, here's Washington Post from four years ago. FDA faulted for stance on chemicals and plastics. They tried to block it but, and did block it, but people still started researching it and, and saying no to the products. Synthetic estrogen BPA costs cash register receipts, coats them, sterilizing the workers. Uh, here's the deadly molecules. Uh, here's the bisphenol A molecule. Give me document cams on all this. I'm just going to hurry through this here. We're going to have like a two-hour show again tonight. There's all that. There's bisphenol A molecule. You might want to find out about this if you care about your family. Or so what? Maybe you like breast cancer. I certainly don't. Just trying to save you. Uh, puberty in girls hastened by harmful chemicals. BPA, common chemical linked to obesity. Oh, yeah, all of it. Even glass jars contain BPA chemical due to lid lining. Scientific study finds 40% of all store receipts contain dangerous hormone disrupting chemical. Dirty money traces a BPA found on Currency Time magazine. Here's a, here it all is. It's, it's in 90% of all canned food. No, no what, you know what you say, no S, Sherlock. Right there, BP, I mean, I'm not in the profanity, folks, but at points like this, it's hard to not be. I mean, what in flaming Hades? Of course, the stinking juice box liners and the stinking can liners are BPA. Of course they found it in 90%. What are your little kids drinking? No wonder Bobby at 11 wants to wear a dress. He's jacked up on so many female hormones, he's got more than Marilyn Monroe at 25.
And no wonder your five-year-old's going into puberty if she's a girl. All right, look. 232 toxic chemicals in 10 minority babies. They did a big study on that. My God. Yeah, they found studies in the same cities where you'll go test blacks and they'll have three or four times the fluoride in them. You know why? Because a lot of cities, it, the, the engineers put it in where the, where the rest don't even understand it. They actually pipe more to the minority areas. My God, the pure evil of this. All right, I, I'm not going to have time to go through all of it. Uh, common chemical linked to a slew of health problems. Bisphenol A. I mean, look, I, bisphenol A, chemical used to make plastics found to leach into drinking bottles into humans. Boom. Um, uh, look, I'm done. I'm done. I, I've got a full focus report coming out on this later in the week. But I don't know how to shut up. I don't know how to not freak out. I don't know how to be completely uh, calm here when we're dealing with this. And I apologize for getting a little bit angry here. But I don't apologize. I mean, look at this. This is, this is official Planned Parenthood garbage saying we're going to encourage homosexuality and put it in the water. I mean, right there. Right there. And then they tell the poor people whose numbers are massively increasing, well, this is just how you feel. You should go with it. In fact, I almost forgot. Guys, Google, because it'll be London Guardian. Pentagon wanted to use gay bomb on Iraqis. And see, there's a reason in every culture the men have done the fighting. In a lion pride, the women go out and hunt and get most of the meat. The males walk perimeter around the pride area and attack hyenas and things and also compete with other males to increase the vigor of the species. And it's the same thing with many species of dolphin. It's the same th porpoise. It's the same thing with so many species that the males defend the territory range of the females and the babies. Now, men normally at a certain point when they're being dominated, we'll just get violent or we'll get politically motivated, which is a form of, you know, high-tech violence done through the law when people try to run over them. It's normal. How did Land of the Free, Home of the Brave turn into a national flag of an obese guy who's had his testicles chopped off sucking a lollipop? I mean, how did America become a sheep sticking its head in the ground, the ostrich sheep? How did we become this? We became this way through chemical warfare. And so as people wake up to this fact that it's happening, they say, oh, no, 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 don't listen to him. Just go with it. Just go with it. And they do this, and then they have all the messages in the media everywhere pushing, oh, you know, you're not attracted to women. Well, you should do this. People ask, well, how do hormones do this? It affects the endocrine system. It affects the olfactory nerve. It gets into smell. It gets into hormonal triggers. Uh, it gets into a whole cornucopia of things that it's not just the curves of a woman that are supposed to attract a man. It's the smell. Even things you can't consciously pick up. Okay? And so it's the smell of a woman. And for women, it's the scent of a man. That's what this is all about. And so they're messing with that. They're playing games with it. And they're sitting back laughing at us, and then they make it a civil right when you don't want this done to your kids. Oh, the government has a right to put the chemicals in there and then come in and take control of your child when they're confused with the school counselor to make sure they get on a path to never have children. And that is an incredible evil. And that I will expose. Stop bombarding us with hormones. Leave me alone like I naturally am. And then you find out for some of these groups, it is about recruiting. It is about a revolution. It is about domination. It is about those who do not like what is the dominant existing order of, of life on this planet, overthrowing it in their own image. And that is blasphemous. Even if you don't believe in God, it is blasphemy against the incredible biosphere, against the incredible life forms of this planet, against that amazing balance that is life. It is a bunch of men playing the part of God and jacking with our entire food supply and system. And again... I'm glad that the media attacked me for that simple line about they want to create gender confusion and break up the family, which I just read to you, just some of the proof. We'll have even more coming out later in the week. Because I was really warning women about breast cancer. And so when people flood in here to attack me uh, for being this wicked homophobe, because I'm pointing out they're, they're jacking us with these chemicals, I will take the blame, which is great, and then people will learn about 
the hormones being added that are massively increasing cancers in women, not as much in men, but it's also bad in men. Because that's all I care about. This will save a lot of people, and, and that's good. CBS News and others don't want you to know about that. Uh, you did find the article about uh, U.S. military. Yes, Air Force looked at spray to turn enemy gay. Look at that, London Guardian. When I reported on that, I was attacked, and they said I made that up. This is what's been done. This is what's going on. This is what is happening. They are trying to take our free will away and chemically do this to us and then say that everybody's born this way. There it is. Far from being the product of conspiracy theorists, documents released to a biological weapons watchdog in Austin. Texas confirmed the U.S. military did investigate the idea. Yeah, you notice conspiracy theory because they'd already been attacking me for it and others. So it's just right there. Okay, London Guardian, biggest paper in Europe, not just England. All right, I'm out of time. We're going to go to break. Come back with two interviews on key subjects. But get this video out to everybody and know later in the week, a big report we put a lot of work into is coming out to expose this. So get it out to everybody you know. Great job to the crew. We'll be right back. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. We were brought up loving our country and our constitution. That in the United States of America, we were free. And that's an attitude that we've tried to instill in our children. I met my wife while uh, in the Air Force. I was a combat pilot in Vietnam. I served in Desert Storm as a commander. When I graduated from the academy, I took the oath of office. Uh, and as a commander, I administered that oath to many people. Now I, I wonder about the understanding people have of our constitution. And I think about our candidates for President of the United States. Uh, it's interesting to see the support Ron Paul gets from the military. And if we think back to the code of conduct uh, and people raising their right hand that they were going to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, why would those same people support in great numbers Ron Paul? I think it's because they know that he supports the Constitution of the United States. It doesn't mean you have to go to war to do it. Uh, it means you have to understand what the Constitution is and be a supporter inside of your own country, whether you're in the military or not, of that Constitution and make the United States strong. And Ron Paul does that. That's his feeling. That's his thrust. And that's why if you look at the percentages that support him and the military, it's huge. Why is that? because they've raised their right hands and they're putting their lives on the line for us here in the United States and they know that Ron Paul does the same. Welcome back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to talk to InfoWars correspondent Patrick Henningsen from London concerning Iran and the huge destabilization campaign the New World Order is carrying out in the Middle East and North Africa, leading to what many, even mainline journalists, call the beginnings of what could turn into World War III. That's coming up with Patrick Henningsen. Uh, but first, uh, because we're getting close to the end of 2011, I wanted to get documentary filmmaker Jason Burmas on with us. He, of course, uh, directed the film that uh, I produced, Invisible Empire, breaking down the history and goals of the New World Order. Absolutely key, seminal uh, film for anybody that wants to have even a basic understanding of how uh, this system works, the system we all live under. And of course, he was involved in the Loose Change Productions, as well as another film I produced. And uh, we'll be getting into that as well, Fabled Enemies. 
But I wanted to get Jason on to talk about all the crazy news taking place and what he sees coming up uh, in the new year. Jason, great to have you here with us. Great to be with you, Alex. All right, we talked about a lot of stuff, and I've got a lot of issues I want to raise, including the one about uh, how they're now fitting bugs with surveillance devices to keep track of the globalist enemies, uh, that, that is the general population. But, but, but out of all the things going on that you're tracking right now, what, what's number one on your radar screen? Well, probably today, the number one thing on my radio, radar screen is actually what's happening in Iraq. Uh, we've had the troop withdrawal, Alex, but it wasn't really a troop withdrawal. We have military personnel there. We have more military contractors there than ever. First, they were Blackwater. Then they were XE Services. And just this month, they changed their name yet again to Academy with an EI at the end. And right on cue, right after the troop withdrawal, what happens? Well, Al-Qaeda strikes again, Alex, and this is fit to basically scare the public into believing in this boogeyman enemy and basically submitting to anything they put forward to us, including more and more out-of-control TSA personnel on the streets here. Well, you're right. In fact, you have the L.A. Times article, 10 years too late, saying TSA, not just for airports anymore, they're going to be at the malls, the highways, grabbing your genitals, grabbing your wife's breast, all part of uh, basic slave training. But look at al-Qaeda. They admit there's four groups of al-Qaeda in Iraq. They're using them to attack Iran while separately blaming Iran for 9-11. Uh, you've got al-Qaeda being given control of Libya, al-Qaeda being shipped in uh, on top of it into Syria. This is all on record. So, I mean, al-Qaeda created by the CIA to fight the Russians, to attack the Serbs, I mean, it's like a skeleton key, the, a, a, a Rosetta Stone. They use them for everything. How dumb do they think we are? Well, basically, they think we're extremely dumb. They think that they can put the, the public into a state of fear where we just go along with anything they say. And they have been beating the drums against Iran on an unprecedented level over the last six months. And just as you said, they're now blaming them for the 9-11 attacks. Of course, Iran has refuted this, and this is all coming into play at the same time that Iran is outing CIA spies in their country and even putting one of them on trial, Alex. Let me bring this up to you, because I don't want to just glaze over this key point you've brought up. Al-Qaeda takes credit for the bombs that have gone off. That wasn't hard to predict. We said, as soon as the, quote, regular military pulls out, you're going to see Al-Qaeda attack, so there's a pretext to say, oh, see, we need you. And now they're talking about breaking the country up into three different parts. I mean, it really is amazing that this is happening. It's always been the plan. Since before the war, we broke it down to, to, to partition the country into three parts. Uh, Jason, they're now doing it again. And they think that we're so stupid. I mean, they've built dozens of these giant embassies where, as you pointed out, there's 100-something thousand mercenaries. Uh, and, and so supposedly it's not an occupied country, it's not a war, if the official U.S. military minimum wage people are gone, and if it's all these mercenaries coming in. Uh, I mean, this is a, just shows a new level of PSYOP where people think the war is over and it's still going on. And it's also coming at a very convenient time to bring home military when the NDAA bill only needs to be signed by our president. It's gone through the House. It went through the Senate. It was then approved by the House again, and now we're just waiting for it to be penned by Barack Obama. And remember, the White House postured and said, oh, we're never going to sign this. As soon as it was agreed upon, of course we're going to sign it. And isn't it convenient that we're having all of these military personnel come home at a time when they are actually starting to build and man FEMA camps through what? Military contractor Kellogg, Brown, and Root, a subsidiary of Halliburton. You know, Jason, we get attacked over the years for reading globalist documents, for being obsessed with reality. Uh, we're the bad guys. We told people there'd be a global economic implosion based on derivatives, that the very mega banks that sold all this fraud would hold the world captive and create a new bank of the world that we'd pay our VAT and carbon taxes to. Now, it's admitted. They say global authoritarianism is here, run by banks, but even The Economist says that's a good thing. So we've been right, and now we're saying they plan to kick off a giant war in the Middle East. Now that's here. Uh, but instead of being patted on the back for being right, we're the bad guys. Absolutely. And I'm really glad that you brought up the carbon tax because that's being implemented by stealth 
in the United States. How so? A European judge has actually ruled that they can implement carbon taxes on all flights. That's American Airlines, United Airlines, Continental Airlines, you name it, on U.S. flights as well. So you won't know you're paying a tax, but your flight fees are going to go up, up, and up some more, just as they did when they made the excuse, oh, we have to start charging you for luggage because there's a gas crisis. Well, when that gas crisis ended, did they take away the luggage fee? Absolutely not. And now some of them are claiming to be insolvent on top of that. And with an, a European judge being given the authority to basically tax the American people on a global level for breathing, because that's what a carbon tax is. You exhale carbon dioxide. It is not a toxin. It is not a poison. It is not something we should be paying taxes on, but we're going to start paying taxes on it, whether we know it or not, Alex. That's right. And, and U.S. airlines and others that have hubs in Europe, they're going to have to adopt it. And now American companies are saying, okay, when your people come here, we're going to tax you as well. I mean, it's here. And it doesn't matter, it's all discredited fraud, a power grab, they're just going ahead with it. Absolutely, and that's why they tried so hard some years ago with the Copenhagen Treaty to just kind of pass it along the lines to create this global authority that would inherit global taxes from everybody and get us to sign on to it. Uh, thank God for people like Lord Christopher Monckton who really brought this into the spotlight and allowed others like yourself to run with it and expose it on a national level. And we were able to defeat it then, Alex, but they keep taking these incremental steps. And now when they can't pass it on a taxation level, they'll just pass it through European foreign judges. Now, Jason, shifting gears into the police state, these banksters are counting on using this authoritarian system and all the paramilitary police to suppress the public while they bring us into this uh, new world order system. And we were talking before we went live here on air about uh, more and more uh, reports out there about governments coming out, not just with artificial dragonflies, but with bugs that have been turned into little cyborgs to crawl in your house and surveil you. And this isn't new technology. You know, we've been talking about the hummingbird drone for some time now. The CIA, like you said, had dragonfly drones back in the 1970s only becoming public a little bit over a year ago, but now we're talking about bugs this size and smaller being fitted with cameras and other sensors. And of course, Alex, it's under the guise of saving us from natural disasters. Oh, these bugs are going to be the greatest thing in a building we can't go into. We're going to be able to find people and help people. Well, why don't we talk about what they're really going to be used for, and that is massive surveillance of American people and American dissidents. And we've got one of those uh, little um, robo bugs up on screen. What's so ridiculous about all this is this governing class of kleptocrats are on total power trips and they've got unlimited taxpayer money to surveil us and stomp on our rights while arrogantly lecturing us all day about what great humanitarians they are and how lucky we are to have them. Uh, I mean, I don't think all their high-tech crap is going to save them in the end. They've committed so many crimes. Look at John Corzine, caught perjuring himself to Congress that he didn't know where the billion-plus dollars went, now caught lying, and he doesn't even get in trouble. There's got to be a limit to what these guys can get away with. Well, you would think so, but uh, ex-president of France, Jacques Chirac, last week was actually convicted of embezzling funds from the public to the tune of millions. And you know what, Alex? He didn't get in trouble. They just commuted his sentence and pardoned him. See, when you're on the global elites team, when you play ball with them, when you promote their agendas, you don't do jail time. Your sentence is commuted like Jacques Chirac, like Scooter Libby some years ago. And unfortunately, the American public has not made enough of an outcry, a decry, to get these systems changed so that we do convict criminals on all levels, especially at the upper echelons. Jason, what else is on your radar? Well, Alex, uh, you know, we were talking about the TSA being all over. We already know the TSA has groped children, has 
strip searched old women, but now we've got a new one. Yes, explosive cupcake frosting. You can't go through airport security with a tasty cupcake that you bought at one of the eateries within the airport anymore because that glaze right there, that could be the next big explosive. Forget about the shoe bomber or the diaper bomber and all those other bombers. Now liquid frosting is a hazard to flying. <laughs> And of course, we can laugh at this, Jason, but what they're doing is always expanding what's a threat so that everybody can be treated like they're guilty. This is prisoner training. That's what the groping is all about in the, in the microwave ovens. It's, it's throwing the precept of innocent until proven guilty into guilty, 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 government is your God, and the TSA, as we mentioned earlier, coming to a shopping mall and a highway checkpoint near you. They're just gearing up for the total collapse of society and setting the precedent that they can do whatever the hell they want. Absolutely. And unfortunately, this seems to be sliding towards a Chinese type society where they just come, grab you, put you in a hole, don't tell you or your family where you're going to be. Uh, we had this happen with Wei Chen some months ago, and then there was an outcry of people. People came to his aid. Well, what happened, Alex? Well, just this week, there was a trial against this man. He was sentenced to nine years in prison, and he was never even allowed to make a statement. Following up on that, Three days later, we have the same thing happening to another Chinese political dissident. And we don't even have the freedom of the press in this world anymore. We now have Swedish journalists who have been convicted of basically going against the state and now will serve 11 years in prison. And we have to protect ourselves from these megalomaniacs that would prosecute any purveyors of free speech and freedom. Well, you're right. Look, the criminal class thought that they could just ignore the alternative media. But we have become the mainstream media, not just in information, uh, being truthful, but in total viewers. And it was a couple of years ago we passed the Rubicon where so-called alternative media together is bigger than all the so-called mainstream media who, who put the crown uh, on their own head. It's the emperor's new clothes. We are the real media. The system knows it. So now they've got this new Internet Act, which in their own words shuts down free speech. Uh, and now they've got the NDAA, all those that said, oh, you're crazy. The government isn't going to secretly arrest Americans. They're not going to get rid of posse comitatus, even though we'd been to the urban warfare drills and witnessed it. Now it's all just passe. Yeah, there's a world government. Yeah, the military is going to arrest you. I mean, it's just open authoritarianism. And as the Bill of Rights and Constitution goes out the window, notice the economy went out the window with it. Oh, so people that say, well, I'm not bad, you know, I'm not worried about a tyranny. It doesn't matter if you're not bad. If you were bad and evil, they'd hire you to work for them. It's not, I have nothing to hide. That's why you got a problem. They want you to be their slave. They want to eat your lunch. They want to dominate you because that's what crooks do. If you were a bad person and had something to hide, you'd go work for them, dummies. Okay, get that? All the time people say, well, uh, yeah. I don't care if they secretly arrest people and torture them because I haven't done anything wrong. Hey, jackass, don't you understand a lot of people didn't do anything wrong to Stalin? That's why he wanted them. They were just little farmers that weren't dependent on him. So he killed them. Hitler, the same thing. Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, Julius Caesar, grow up, grow up. You're in danger, jackass, because the criminals see you as a chump who'll put up with anything. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you talked about the faltering economy because we have big stores like Kmart and Sears just announcing, you know what, we're going to have to shut down 100 plus uh, stores. We have banks such as Bank of America, JP Morgan, they're saying they're going to fire 150,000 people this year alone. Maybe this will help them to hide from the American public and the world populace that they're basically insolvent at this point. Even though you have heads of the IMF coming out and saying, well, we really are in a global depression right now and we're not sure where the economy is actually going to be going. All this while our sitting president has now broken the record for the most money raised for any campaign of a presidency ever. And it's not even 2012, he is projected to have raised $200 million this year alone. Let's compare that 
to the real front runner out there, Ron Paul. Some people have the numbers at about 12.6 million. Some people have the numbers at 15 million. You know, let's give him 20 million. That's a tenth of what the man in office is spending. And who has more support on the streets, Alex? Who has more signs out there than anybody else? No, no, no. Who Ron Paul, about on average, his donation is about $25. Uh, with with Obama, it's all these billionaire fat cats, and you've got all these moron Democrats thinking he's going to save them from something when he's bankrolled by the various people that are bankrolling Ginrich uh, and all these other scumbags like Romney. I mean, it is so transparent. Well, undoubtedly, 2012 is going to be a crazy year. In closing, uh, what are your uh, predictions or perspectives on what you think is going to happen in this coming uh, big 2012? Well, I really hope that people get off their butts and get out there and say no to this NDAA bill, especially if it is signed by the White House. I really feel like they're biding their time. They're waiting for another distraction, another disaster to do it under the cover of night. And if this thing passes, all you occupiers out there, all you tea parties out there, everybody who has any bit of of semblance in their heart for freedom must get out to D.C., must get out to the lawn of the Capitol and the White House and say no to this because it's not only un-American, it is against humanity, Alex. Well, you're right. The whole world now says, well, we'll secretly arrest and torture and kill because America, the good guys do it. I mean, we've now become an open tyranny. Jason Barmas, thank you so much for spending time with us. So we've had on screen your Twitter account. Is that the best place for folks to check out your work? Absolutely. All right, Jason Barmas, thank you for uh, giving us your perspective. Thank you, Alex. All right, my friends, we're going to go to break and come back with another great InfoWars.com correspondent, Patrick Henningsen. Uh, he's going to report on geopolitical developments, uh, what could be turned into World War III with Iran, the military drills in the Strait of Hormuz, they could shut down 40% of uh, world oil supplies, the Iranians threatening uh, Western helicopters to blow them out of the sky. Things are certainly heating up. We'll also look at al-Qaeda forces that Burmas mentioned earlier, openly working for the same mega banks that have hijacked this country. It's InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be right back. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread. Go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. Dr. Ron Paul, more than 4,000 babies delivered. A man of faith, committed to protecting life. Some people need to have a good word said about them. Ron is the sort of person that his, his life is his good word. You know, you just knew that Ron cared about you. Life begins at conception, in my opinion, and as a result, I love to go to a doctor who felt the same way. He not only um, protects unborn life, but he also um, walks through journeys with women, and he has for years. I love the fact that he hadn't changed in all these years. Ron's still the same guy, still saying the same things, and now all these years later, still standing his ground. Ron did not let Washington change him. It's not hard for someone who is a Christian and who truly believes to stay on the right path. And I think that's what kind of person Ron Paul is. America has to have someone like Ron Paul today. There is no question. Welcome back. It's the final segment of InfoWars Nightly News as we prepare to close out uh, 2011 this week. We're going to be looking at the storm clouds gathering uh, over the Middle East and over Persia, and there in the Persian Gulf. A year ago, uh, our experts uh, on air, but also our sources inside the military, confirmed to us that the system was moving towards a green light for war with Iran. Now we see the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, top U.S. generals, um, Israeli leaders saying, the war is on. 
Iran gives up its nuclear program, whether you believe it's peaceful or not, uh, or we're going to attack you. And Iran has responded by running drills that are still ongoing and threatening uh, aircraft and ships in the area if they get near their waters to shut down the Strait of Hormuz that controls 40% of world oil supplies a day. Now, if you'd like to see oil prices double or even triple, and that's what would happen through a disruption, uh, be for war. Now, I've seen people on Infowars.com flooding us with spam on articles we've been posting and, and writing about this saying, I'm a Christian, it's the end of the world, thank God, let's nuke them, let's start it. And I see a lot of Christian churches pushing this, and this is not what Christians would be promoting. And people accuse Iran and some Muslim sects of wanting to start the end of the world. Um, this is insanity. Okay, mega central banks are imploding the world economy, including the Middle Eastern economy, and trying to set up a world government on its ashes. This is now public. So for all of you that laughed at us in the last decade, oh, there's no world government, oh, there's no mega banks, oh, derivatives aren't bad, don't you look foolish now. But you feel like you're part of the establishment because you repeat and regurgitate everything that the paid-for talking heads say to you every night. I'm not talking to our general listeners and patriots out there worldwide who understand human dignity and who are patriots for liberty and freedom. I'm talking to those of you out there who are the minority who still support this tyranny. And I'm talking to those that serve this system as well. You are destroying your future, your children's future, and our future. And we're now up to the wire on this. And, you know, my dad is a smart guy. And over the years, he believes most of what I say. He researches it and find out, you know, finds out that it's true. But this weekend, I was over there for Christmas dinner with my family. We were outside and uh, grilling some steaks. And he said, you know, I've really done all the research and looked into all these claims. You know, it's, it's even in mainstream news that Western governments fund al-Qaeda and use them in Syria and Iran and Iraq and Libya. And, and how does the public not get upset. How does the military not get upset? I mean, the, he goes, I just read Brzezinski's book where he brags that they created him. It's all true. And he was looking at me really freaked out. And he said, my God, these people are madmen. And I'm like, yes, that's right. They're madmen. They say, give up your rights in America or Al-Qaeda will get you. And then use Al-Qaeda to take over countries. And now the West supposedly pulls out of Iraq and then Al-Qaeda strikes. When the very same Al-Qaeda group are groups that the West admits they're funding to attack Iran. I mean, it's incredible. The, the entire system knows they can't hide this anymore, so they don't. It, it, it is schizophrenic. It is, it is crazy. It is unspeakable that we've come to this point. Now, I want to bring Patrick Henningsen on, who is a reporter for Infowars.com. He's very brave as well. Just about a month ago, he said, look, I'll do it on my own dime, but I want to go to Syria. And I said, well, I, 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 please don't do that, Patrick. It's super dangerous. Tarpley has been there and reported for us and, and was there where, where uh, Western snipers were posing as al-Qaeda shooting people. I mean, it's nuts. But he is there in England. He talks to a lot of the reporters over there. And uh, he does a lot of great work for Infowars.com. He also has 21stCenturyWire.com, which is his site. Uh, but uh, he is reporting uh, for us from England on this situation, and we're going to cover the waterfront. We'll also get into Ron Paul and some news breaking today that he's working on that uh, Qatar is actually funding the destabilization of the House of Saud. So we're going to discuss that all with him today. Patrick, I mean, things have never gotten more transparent than they have now. Yeah, this this is the incredible this is the incredible thing about this this point in history. It's also the thing that uh, it makes it difficult to sleep at night because you go to bed thinking, you know, all these the, the clandestine movements over. It's all happening right in your face right now. And this is the thing. Uh, looking at uh, Libya, a lot of people got a lot of confidence from the operation in Libya. Uh, anybody that was allied with NATO, the NATO countries, um, and this is like a green light. This is a fantastic opportunity for, for those sort of opportunists. They can look at Libya and say, "Hey, you know, we don't have to make up anything about WMDs. We can just do this like straight in off of some kind of a flimsy UN resolution, and let's repeat this process." Even the British uh, Foreign Secretary was kind of boasting, saying, "Look at Libya. This is a great uh, return for, on our investment." We spent X amount on the military operation, 
and we're getting X amount back in contracts. What a fantastic success. Obviously, he caught a lot of criticism for that at the time. He's saying, look at this template. We can use this in Syria. We can repeat this in Iran. And it actually, uh, Webster Tarpley uh, said this back in 2010, uh, that all these regimes in the Middle East were going to go down, including the monarchies. So obviously, Bahrain and the House of Saud, uh, these people are safe at the moment, um, but how long will they be safe? Uh, the U.S. has seemed to have found a nice best buddy, best new best friend, new Middle Eastern best friend in Qatar, and the Emir of Qatar. And the story just came out on Press TV, which is really a rerun of uh, uh, of something that was was reported back in 2008, and uh, that was that uh, Qatar um, and some of these other. Uh, U.S. allies were could possibly play a key role, and there's an article on Infowars.com right now about that in, in destabilizing the House of Saud, and you know Saudi Arabia still wants some independence. Obviously, they're one of the biggest. Um, I think Russia is officially now the biggest oil producing company in the uh, country in the world, but uh, Saudi Arabia is obviously tied or it's, it's significant, it's second or first or whatever. But uh, they produce oil, they control, have a lot of uh, control and a lot of power in setting the price of oil with the other OPEC nations. So, uh, but they still want some independence. Qatar has uh, made it known to everybody that it will get completely right into bed with the United States with regards to any of their foreign intervention projects and uh, who knows what else. And, and certainly we've seen the globalists stab their old ally Mubarak in the back in Egypt. And, and, and the word is that Saudi Arabia has been making uh, now even public overtures to Pakistan and Russia. Uh, so they're trying to play a double game right now. Uh, but, but, but I mean, how long can this Anglo-American globalist combine get away with this? Well, this this is, uh, this is a good question, Alex. And you know, I was, you, you know how you sit around on Christmas it's funny you ask that question. You know, you sit around Christmas Day with the family. And there's usually some interesting movies on. And I watched a movie called The Fall of the Roman Empire with Alec Guinness, Christopher Plummer, and uh, Sophia Loren, I think. Yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, it's a great film. But uh, it, it, it had some great uh, quotes from the narrator towards the beginning and the end. He said, in every great empire, will, will, it will be something that falls uh, something that happens within the empire that will collapse it from within, within Rome, and not from any of external external enemies. And one of the things uh, that made Rome, um, it, and the fall of Rome was a process as well. It wasn't an event that happened overnight. Uh, it probably took place over about 400 years. Yeah, it began it was, with tyranny, overthrowing the Senate, and then things just degenerated, and you saw the moral decline, the exact same thing that's been done here. Yeah, and then you know, so you do. See, yeah, you you do see this kind of uh, you see the Caligula uh, moral decline aspect with with the United States, but also most importantly, and this is this is probably Ron Paul is is a bit of a prophet, really, if you look at the rest of the, the the political field. He's been the only one who has been talking about and is still really the only one who is still talking about the economic aspects of the empire. And the empire uh, having to be able to stretch its 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 borders, you know, globally now. Um, and also the U.S. has found a new way to co-opt uh, future members of, of the Anglo-American the Anglo-American Empire through this kind of uh, uh, some the, the NATO or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or the WTO World Trade Organization or GATT and this they found new kind of supranational ways to co-opt partners in the future, but the you know the message is clear you know if you want to get into bed with the Anglo-American Empire. You know, you may you may have a nice warm seat on the left side of the bed for a while, but uh, sooner or later you will be kicked out of bed and kicked out of the house uh, if you do fall out of favor. Or well, that's with, because it, it really is a new type of tyranny. The, there have been many systems that the, you know that sought to dominate and just go ahead and exterminate um, the people that they'd uh, conquered. But in this system, the scientific dictatorship, in their own words, and I was just going over some documents earlier today on this that are so shocking when you actually read it, where they say, this is a UN and Planned Parenthood, we will destroy the family, we will put chemicals in the food and water to feminize the men, 
Uh, we will forcibly abort them. We will bring in tyranny, and we will rout these people. And you realize it's an attack against humanity. It's a rewriting of what we were and, and are in our destiny. Uh, it, it, it's, it's still keeping us around as kind of biological androids, but destroying any semblance of humanity. And you know, to not just have the White House science czar calling for stuff in the water, which we know they do engage in, but to have it in all these UN documents and things, and to know these little bastards have been doing it, and then to know that you can't even get mad at the general public. These are brain-damaged, chemically attacked zombies. And, and that the few, the few of us that are really conscious and awake to this uh, just had a higher resistance to it. I mean, it, th this is beyond, we're living in a science fiction movie. <laughs> It, it is it is completely science fiction. You, we're looking at a, a Twilight Zone scenario now where uh, vitamin supplements and homeopathic remedies are, are being uh, made to be licensed or illegal. Uh, and where GM corn or Agent Orange, you know, they, they want to do an Agent Orange resistant Monsanto, an Agent Orange resistant strain of GM corn. Okay, why on earth would you be wanting to... Uh, produce such such a creature and introduce it into the biosphere unless you're planning on someone's planning on using agent orange um i, I really for the life of me can't figure out why you would unban some of these these horrible chemicals well, we talked to dr doug rocky we need to get him back on i know he's been ill but he was the guy that wrote you know the du program for the pentagon and and and, and he was he was talking about released agent orange documents where the cover was it was to kill plants and it had that effect too but they knew it was a dioxin-based chemical weapon. They could get around treaties by saying it was a defoliant, but it also had, you know, this neurotoxic effect on all uh, animals, not just plants. And a new big study came out today that we covered in the news, where major prestigious, uh, you know, major major prestigious uh, scientific papers are coming out that all these major varieties are sterilizing people and attacking organs. I mean. Again, words cannot describe. I get accused a lot of, oh, that couldn't be that bad. He's exaggerating. No, 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 folks. The English language cannot describe it. You know, uh, I, I guess the, the movie The Matrix, they say one cannot be told about The Matrix, one must see it. One cannot be told about the New World Order, folks. You just got to wake up and look into it for yourself. You're going to find out. They're, they, I mean, how do I have 500 documents? You know that I've read and researched, and then you know of uh, of how they're doing this to us, and then just try to mention a few, and people go, "Oh, that's not true." I'm sorry, Patrick. Go ahead. No, if if you want to break, you know, I've got skeptics that I have to deal with in my life as well. The, they're people in my family, they're my friends, they're my work colleagues that that don't really want to believe that that these things can be happening, or that someone who would have done something by now, if what you're saying is true, really, what let's break it down to a really simple equation. Look at uh, fluoride, depleted uranium. Um, all number of toxic bands or chemical weapons. Most of these things, if you look back and you look at the history and you check the, the, the genealogy of all these, these evil things, they were uh, waste byproducts. And they were discovered within the post-manufacturing process, okay? Certainly with the alu aluminum industry, uh, I believe uh, created fluoride, okay? So, and then you have nuclear waste. And then you have depleted uranium, and this is constant recycling. And th to make new and more weird uh, uranium uh, coatings and things like that, you can even recycle the recycled uh, nuclear waste, okay? It's cheaper for them to recycle it and sell it to somebody. It's cheaper for them to dump the fluoride, f find out a way to make people buy it, dump it into the water supply, and everyone makes money out of it, or pesticides, the same, same thing. I wonder which which came first, the uh, the, the the pesticide or the uh, the evil pesticide or the evil killer seed. It was probably the evil pesticide. Well, but it was Monsanto it, was Mr. Pesticide, and so of course they came out with poison food. Yeah, so the, the, there's a market for rubbish, toxic rubbish, and and really it's, it's yeah. The as value. long as they market it, and then and then as long as it's poison garbage. People are right. It's like, oh my! I mean, it's like these drug ads where, are, are you got restless feet? They kicking around a little bit at night. Just some made up BS. Okay, we'll take this. It may make you in the ad a. Comp we have to dig that ad up. A compulsive gambler and go crazy. And, you know, it lists all these, and it's like, 
you know, got trouble, got a headache, well, shoot yourself in the head. Uh, you know, your finger hurts, chop it off with a meat cleaver. I mean, it, it's like you watch it, and it's like absurdist twilight zone. It's like you said, it, it's... Well, you know, you go out to the farmer out in uh, in Iowa, or you go to the farmer out in Nebraska. You know, and there's there's a guy from the chemical company. He's good. I knew his son. He also worked this part of the state. We we've had an account with them, and he, they're good people, and they're selling us these chemical pesticides. And I know the Monsanto people, and they're good people too. And I'm sure they are. And I'm sure you. I'm sure that a lot of people that work in Monsanto have no bloody idea uh, about any of any of the genetically modified properties of the, some of the uh, products they're doing. But you know, this is two, this is 2012 now. I don't think anybody has an excuse to be ignorant anymore. And this is the, this is the big thrust of the message in the information war. You cannot claim ignorance anymore. The information is out there. Let's take advantage of it. It might not be out there forever. This free internet could be a phenomenon. This could be a, a flamboyant period in, uh, in, in 21st century technology where they actually let us put, put our websites up and choose our domain names and so forth. We don't know how long it's going to be here for. We need to take advantage of it now. And anybody who's not taking advantage of it, you want to encourage them to do so. We want to be downloading information. We want to be, everyone should be writing ebooks, should be publishing things. And so this is a bit of the revolution of that, that we are experiencing the digital revolution. But um, you know, the, the, the evil is out there. You know, you, you, you have an ability to see and know evil, you know, to be able to see it. You can see it in the dealings of, of men. Uh, you can see it in the dealings of politicians and big businesses in the banks in the, user, the predatory usury uh, system of banking. There's no excuse not to, to be able to see this. And a lot, of, a lot of Christians don't want to believe, still don't want to believe that there's such thing as Satan, believe it or not. You know, if, if you did a poll, a lot of them actually don't believe in the devil. They believe in God, but they don't believe in the devil. So these are the times we're living in, Alex. Well, you're right. And the very articulate what you've pointed out there, the system called it a worldwide web because the real name is worldwide wiretap and DARPA and the Pentagon on record said in the 60s and 70s they designed what is now the internet as a system of control to be jacked into everything be wired into everything and track everything we do so they could have predictive programs to basically with statistical analysis predict the future and I've talked about this for many years now, and even in the Wall Street Journal, they admit that Google and all of this is a government crystal ball. Uh, and again, it doesn't actually see the future. It's just with enough human activities integrated in, they can war game it out statistically and come up 99% of the time, they say. I'm sure it's even more advanced. They always tell us about the old technology. Mass movements and 93 to 96%, they can predict when you're going to pull over at a steakhouse because they already know with the computer that there's a steakhouse up here and they know about your previous decisions, time actuaries. The point is, is that this is playing God, but it's still just men running it. And, and that's probably why uh, we're in so much danger because th they have this hubris and, and of course pride goes before a fall. Uh, it's so dangerous and, and we are in such a critical juncture. So they believed that they would use the internet and it didn't matter if we had voices because they would just call us conspiracy theorists and discredit us. But because so many of us did use the system, they're now saying, as, as Jay Rockefeller said, who's now the head of that dynasty, one of the most powerful men on earth, he said, we would have been better off without this, and it's time to start shutting the damn thing off. You can pull those quotes up, folks. Uh, and so now they're moving to the Internet 2 model, which is just the same Internet, but blocking others, selective Internet kill switches on domains, making you be on master domains like Yahoo!, uh, or YouTube, where, th where you sign up under a contract, uh, new uh, preemptive uh, systems where they use copyright to shut you down. The 80 inventors of the Internet, as you know, two weeks ago went public and said this is the end of the Internet, an authoritarian takeover. It sounded like Patrick Henningsen or Alex Jones. So as you said, the denial's over. People, you better appreciate InfoWars Nightly News and Patrick Henson's articles. It doesn't mean we're the best or have all the answers or coach and have teleprompters and info babes. We're regular people who can see what the globalists have said. You know, that's what's frustrating for me, Patrick, and I want you to you know, close commenting on this, is that it's all written down. These people think we're so stupid that 
that they publicly write books, Brzezinski, about how they use Al-Qaeda and how they work for them. And, and they publicly brag how they're jacking with our water. And they brag about how they're stealing our pension funds and how they've set up financial pyramid schemes that are meant to rob us. And it's just all there. And we're here saying to the public, hey, did you see this? Did you see this? And now the public's actually listening. So the system's racing to start World War III, racing to shut down the web, racing to demonize Ron Paul. What I'm worried about is, is that they're going to lose control and then just go ahead and start an even bigger war. You know, we need him to lose control and kind of collapse like the old Soviet Union or something. But instead, I mean, look at Ron Paul. They've tried to demonize him, so he's gotten a boost in the polls from it. I mean, they're starting to figure out they're out of bullets. That's why they want to shut the web down and stuff. I'm kind of ranting here, but you hear the gestalt. You've got the floor for three or four minutes to, to give us your comments on the big picture. Sure. Um, you know, th this exact, exactly what you're talking about. Uh, when I, I was on uh, Al Jazeera, asked me to come on, and they did a program called Empire. And they asked me to come on and give my opinion about what a war game attack on Iran would look like. And I told the producer beforehand, I said, um, look, I'm going to tell you straight up, uh, I think this is a, it'll be a disaster. Uh, I don't know if that's what you're looking for for this program, but I'm going to give you my honest opinion that it's going to be an absolute disaster. And I told them, I, I, said, I said to them, I said, the best laid plans of mice and men don't always come to fruition, and that chaos theory can be introduced here. This is uncharted territory for the U.S. They've never fought anybody uh, since Second World War, that actually fought back. If you really look at, at history, uh, they've all these. It's been rigged uh, kind of military adventures. Okay, um, so uh, there's the chaos theory that comes into play. Certainly with the internet, you're you actually hit the nail on the head. When I used to work in the city of London, way way back, um, I used to work in the hospitality side back in the 90s. And when the internet first came on the scene, uh, I was eavesdropping uh, directors' lunches at Credit Suisse for his Boston and also in the, in the Lord Mayor's uh, mansion house. And these old guys who were captains of industry during the Margaret Thatcher and the John Major years, they were saying, Internet, oh, this is just a fad. What is with this Internet? You saw email. I haven't, I've, my secretary does emails. And this, is a, this was in 1997, 98, okay? They really, the elite had no idea the Internet would take off the way it did. So now that we've got a hold of it, people need to maximize it to, to its absolute maximum because they, they did not count on chaos theory uh, coming into the equation. You can't calculate it. You know, the phys physicists, the greatest physicists can't even calculate it. All they know is they know it's there. They know it's there and it will play a crucial role. And You're right. They can only map things that they've gone over thousands of times in normal human activity. When they enter these new paradigms with new technologies, uh, and, and it is a bunch of old, crazy, wicked men who are not in control. They think they are, and, 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 and the more people wake up to them, the more they're trying to exercise their tyranny. It, it, I, I just see disaster. Yeah. Well, you know, if the, one, one wrong move on the part of some psychopath in the U.S. State Department or in the, uh, you know, the British Foreign Office, um, in the bureaucratic class, one wrong politically motivated move in the bureaucratic class uh, on the chessboard, and you can have an absolute Pandora's box. Okay. Now, uh, the good the good news is, the good news is, is that uh, <clears throat> Iran uh, is is not as psychopathic from my analysis as as the U.S. is. So uh, if they were to retaliate, <clears throat> it would be measured retaliation, uh, and it wouldn't be a random sort of thing. But you never know. With the, you know, we live in also the world of false flag attacks. So you know, there's always a possibility. The probability is that this will drag itself out um, over the next couple of years. Okay, but uh, the possibility is that it could happen at any time. So it's 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 trying to you know span the chasm between probability and possibility. Uh, if you want to, everyone wants to predict what's going to happen in 2012. There's the possibilities and there's the probabilities. So I'm, I tend to work on the probabilities, uh, but I do keep the possibilities in the corner of my head. Um, well, no doubt, not, now is a time for people to be involved like never before, and I think that's your uh, coming up to the New Year message. Patrick Hendrickson, great job writing for InfoWars.com over there in London. Be safe. Thank you.
All right, folks, that was an absolutely jam-packed transmission. Again, great job to our skeleton crew here. A couple of people are off uh, on holiday with their families here at the tail end of Christmas. Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow on the radio, 11 a.m. Central and back 7 o'clock Central here with InfoWars Nightly News. We covered a lot of information tonight, and it's all incredibly important. But that info I went over at the end of the news tonight dealing with the U.N. and Planned Parenthood documents about uh, spiking our food and water and breaking up our families. I mean, this is a full-on assault against humanity. And then when you criticize it, they try some weird political correctness. This is about a scientific dictatorship playing God and ending the human species as we know it. And it needs to stop. We can defeat these people, but only by becoming conscious of the false environment that they've built around us. I'm Alex Jones, uh, signing off until tomorrow. God bless you all.